Hello everyone, welcome to the daily editorial analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Today, 15th November 2024. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss. The first article, the discovery of insulin and frame of hope. This article is taken from the newspaper The Hindu. This article is talking about the, the World Diabetes Day, which is observed on every November 14. And in this article, we will be covering the basics about diabetes and how it is becoming a global challenge. And the second article, leverage similarity, complementarity in Nigeria. This article is talking about the upcoming visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi from November 16 to 18 in Nigeria and what is the potential of Indo-Nigerian relationship and opportunities in it that's what that will be discussed in this topic and the third topic Birsa Munda lives on this article is written by the president of India Draupadi Murmu and this article is talking about the about Jharkhand day it is observed on 15th November every year to commemorate to observe the legacy and the life of Birsa Munda the tribal leader and freedom fighter who lived in pre-independent India in the 19th century and this article is taken from the newspaper Indian Express and this topic we will be covering the life legacy and of Birsa Munda, Munda rebellion and what are the government initiatives are taken in the present times to empower the tribal communities and what are the challenges in it that will be covered in this topic so without much delay let's get into a topic but before moving into the topic there is an important announcement from Shankar IS Academy pre-storming UPSC prelims series 2025 batch third will be starting on 21st November 2024 and we know that solving as much as questions is the only way to crack prelims. Therefore, the link for the registration will be given in the description. Please do register and take the test. And the second announcement is regarding the Chakra Initiative of Shankar IAS Academy. This is exclusive program for current affairs. We know current affairs is, is equally important in both prelims as well as in mains. Therefore, do register for this program. And the details of the program will be given in the description as a brochure. And without much delay, let's get into our discussion. Look at this newspaper article, Birsa Munda lives on. This newspaper article is taken from the newspaper Indian Express. And this article is written by our president of India, Draupadi Murmu. And this article is talking about the Birsa Munda. Why? Because today it is Jharkhand Day. Because Birsa Munda was born on this day. Who is Birsa Munda? We know the tribal leader a freedom fighter who lived in the pre-independent India. So, let us discuss more about his life, his legacy and what are the measures taken by the government to ensure the social justice and welfare of the tribal community living in India in the present time. First, we will start with the early life and the background of Birsa Munda. He was born on November 15, 1875 in, in Ulluhartu village, a small village in Jharkhand. And his tribal affiliation, from the name itself, we know that he belongs to Munda tribe and during his time that is in the 19th century the British already established in that time it was government rule not the company rule they brought lot of uh, act and uh, reforms related to land and forest and this new reforms in land and forest significantly affected the indigenous population living dependent on land and forest and this resulted into the immense suffering and exploitation of the tribal communities for example the the forest act which was bought bought by the british significantly undermined the rights as well as the relation between the people and the forest therefore it resulted into exploitation of that particular community and mundas were one of the communities affected by the british forest policies coming to the munda rebellion the munda rebellion happened between 899 to 1900. So, this is a period of Munda rebellion. But even before the Munda rebellion, the, the Deccan Plateau, the Chota Nagpur Plateau witnessed a lot of ferocious tribal resistance against the outsiders, including the British company as well as the money lenders. And this period, Birsa Munda led the Munda rebellion, and the movement of the name was Ulgulan, that means the great tumblet. The objective of this movement was fight against the British exploitation as well as the Semindari practice. So, we know Semindari means permanent owners of the land that they were not permanent actually. The British made them permanent through the Permanent Land Settlement Act of 1793. We know that Lord Cornwall is uh, introduced to this Semindari system and uh, through the Semindari system the Semindars became the permanent land, land owners and uh, they gave absolute, the company gave them absolute right to collect tax from the peasants. And this resulted into immense suffering and exploitation of the peasant communities. And later uh, in the 19th century, slowly the outsiders uh, encroached into the forest land. Therefore, the cementary practices also started in the forest and in nearby forest areas that uh, significantly affected the tribal life as well as their rights in the forest. 
so from the causes itself we know that disruption of the communal land ownership that is kunkati is a major reason behind the outbreak of the munda rebellion and another major reason is the the settlement of the non tribal people in the land so this will result in the immense uh, exploitation as well as discrimination that means uh, the people who are living in the forest will face a discrimination in their own land this becomes intolerable for the tri tribal community living in that region and during the rebellion the munda rebellion the revolts the rebels used a flag that is a white flag which represents the aspiration for freedom what was the outcome outcome the british were powerful at the same time they suppressed the munda rebellion in 1900 birsa munda was captured and he was put in jail and later he died in the prison now we are going to see the spiritual as well as social leadership of birsa munda so the birsa munda is often known as darthi abba which means the father of the earth so this spiritual aspect of the munda rebellion is actually one of the setbacks of that rebellion we we know the nature of the tribal uh, revolt right it is very ferocious at the same time it is very wild but the spiritual nature was a setback because they believed in spiritualism while the british people had a technology so this become a weakness of the munda rebellion that time but anyway the spiritual idea united the the tribal community living in the chota nagpur plate and coming to the social leadership birsa munda promoted indigenous religious practices to unite the tribal community so when the religion the spiritual aspect becomes a weakness in the rebellion but on other side it becomes a strength for uniting the tribal community so here we can understand it is a kind of marxian principle in understanding the the importance or the relevance of spiritualism in the past this is how the marxian school of thought studies the religion coming to the legacy and impact of the uh, munda rebellion so the munda rebellion resulted into uh, introduction of the chota nagpur tenancy act of 1908 which protects the tribal rights tribal rights and land alienation and presently every november 15 is celebrated as jharkhand day or jan jatiya gaurav divas as an honor to munda as an honor to birsa munda and to observe the upholding of tribal rights so this is the modern map of jharkhand you can see so jharkhand it is sharing boundary with the maharashtra chatisgarh odisha west bengal at the same time bihar and certain part is sharing boundary with the up also so not this boundary sometimes it can be a prelims question and that time uh, in the pre independence period this is this was not the structure of the area that time this region is not as known as chota nagpur plate so this region is traditionally inhabited by the tribal population and also witnessed the ferocious and violent tribal uprising against the cementas and the british companies now we are going to see the challenges in the present times in empowering the tribal communities in india the first major challenge is the economic marginalization which is a result of land alienation due to the deforestation for developmental purposes such as industrial projects and second one is a debt bondage we know that the the people in the forest are depending directly and indirectly for their livelihood culture for the in the forest but due to the development projects due to the uh, government policies this uh, forest is getting destroyed day by day and the the people who are depending on the forest becomes you know comes to a question about their life what they can do next the, actually they were they were depending on the forest traditionally so a new lifestyle a new setup a social setup or economic setup will not suit them easily therefore to leave uh, they will purchase money from the money lenders and another major crisis here is the the tribal population you know in several situations they are lacking knowledge about the uh, the modern lifestyle and the modern systems at the same time this this will be taken as an advantage by this modern money lenders and they will trap them this uh, tribal communities in the debt and will use them for their own benefits for example recently we witnessed a, a mine uh, an accident in the a mine in gujarat so most of the uh, uh, workers died in the mine were actually coming from tribal background only that region only and they were uh, and the newspaper itself discusses that many of them were in the debt trap and the next uh, challenge is the education gap that means the relatively less literacy rate in the tribal population which is lesser than the national average for example our national average is presently 74 percentage while the tribal literacy rates itself is only 72 percentage so scarcity of the traditional material in the tribal languages is one of the major reasons but currently the new education policy is including considering this factor also therefore maybe we can exp expect a development in this and the next major challenge is the healthcare access that means the poor infrastructure uh, availability in the remote area especially in the deep forest 
results into high malnutrition and disease rates and other issues such as the social in, social exclusion and the discrimination for example the stigmatization of the people uh, results into uh, political as well as limited political representation for the tribal communities and next one is erosion of the identity due to cultural assimilation pressures we know that the the chota nagpur plateau which is known for rich tribal culture but at the same time it also has economic importance due to the presence of the minerals therefore the industrial workers from different parts of the country will migrate to the this region which uh, affects the indigenous tribe and their culture and the last is particularly vulnerable tribal groups so we know that there are around 75 particularly vulnerable tribal groups across 18 states face social as well as economic isolation and they lack basic amenities including modern education and modern tools so this is another major hurdle in the growth and development of the tribal community or empowering them now we are going to see certain measures taken by the government to empower the tribal communities the first major scheme is one then yojana it promotes entrepreneurship among the tribal community through minor forest produce that means the the collected forest to produce which is very valuable can be used for and as a part of this program and as a part of this program the government has already established 50000 plus one then vikas kendras across india in the year 2023 which is which supports more than 3 lakh tribal entrepreneurs and the implementing body of this scheme is tribal cooperative marketing development federation of india it is currently working under the ministry of minor ministry of tribal affairs and then we have the egalavia model residential schools it promotes tribal ownership then he, then we have the pradhan mandri aadi purush gram yojana the main objective of the scheme is to improve infrastructure in the tribal villages and presently it targets development of 36000 plus tribal villages across india and this program is implemented by ministry of tribal affairs in partnership with the ministry of rural development and other state authority and the next scheme is the scholarship for the tribal students the objective of the scheme is to provide financial assistance for education at various levels and so far approximately 30 lakh students benefited from the scholarship schemes and this program is currently implemented by the ministry of tribal affairs with a, with the coordination of national scholarship portal so the through this portal you can register for the scholarship program the last major scheme is it aspirational district program this is focusing on improving the socio economic development of the tribal population and it presently targets 112 districts across multiple sectors and the implementing body for this program is the niti ayog and niti ayog in coordination with the central ministries as well as the state departments are currently coordinating this program aspirational district program in this topic we discussed the life of birsa munda his legacy is uh, munda rebellion then we discussed what are the challenges that we have currently in empowering the tribal communities in india what are the challenges faced by them and what are the initiatives taken by the government to empower them so based on this discussion try to answer this main question the question is discuss the various measures taken by the government of india to empower tribal communities critically analyze the effectiveness of these measures in addressing socio economic challenges faced by the tribal communities in the 21st century so this uh, we have to address the problems faced by the current tribal societies and in the first area first part we have to address what are the steps taken by that in second part we have to critically analyze that means we have to address what are the challenges in implementing the socio economic or the uh, measures taken by the government uh, try to answer this means practice question with this idea and post it in the comment section we will review and reply for your answer now we will move to the next topic look at this newspaper article taken from the hindu leverage similarity complementarity in nigeria this article is talking about the upcoming visit of prime minister narendra modi to nigeria and what is the potential of indo nigerian relationship and what are the challenges in it so let us discuss more about this first we will start with the nation nigeria we know that nigeria it is located in africa and it is also known as the giant of africa because of the large population and distant economic achievement made by the nation and boundaries the nation shares boundary with the benin in the west chad and cameroon in the east and niger in the north and uh, it shares its southern boundary with uh, the gulf of guinea and it is a water body the capital of the nation is abuja city so this is a map so we know that benin it is in the west niger in the north cameroon we can east to southeast and chad it is the eastern partner of nigeria and uh, here you can see the sahel region the sahel region it includes sub saharan nations that region is known as sahel sometimes the questions can be asked and at the same time you can see lake chad so lake chad it is spread across three nations that is nigeria chad at the same time niger 
So this can also be a question. Moving on, now we are going to see the mineral potential of the Nigeria. Major minerals found in the nation are verites, gypsum, kaolin and marble. But considering the estimation of the total mineral reserve in the nation, the nation only exploited very minimal. Therefore, still it has a lot of potential to give more minerals to the development of the nation. And the common factor that connects India and Nigeria is the colonial history. Both nations share a colonial history with Britain. Britain colonized Nigeria in the late 19th century. The late 19th century, the colonization of Africa is also known as the trouble for Africa. This can be asked us in UPSC mains or even in the UPSC prelims. And after the struggle for Africa, Nigeria became a colony of Britain. And the, in the, the Nigeria was also exploited in the same way India got exploited by the, the colonial Britain. For example, Nigeria was just treated as a source of raw material, especially to get oil, palm oil and uh, cocoa. So, in the same way, India was exploited by the Br British for cotton after the 18th, 19th century. Coming to the ethnic divisions in the Nigeria, the British rule created significant social divisions within the Nigerian society uh, in the like in the in the case of India the best example is the divide and rule policy one of the best example of this divide and rule policy is the government of India act 1909 communal electorate so in the same way the British used the divide and rule policy in Nigeria British not only used this divide and rule policy in Nigeria the British used the British used the same divide and rule policy in almost every colonies including Myanmar and Malaysia Therefore, the British divide and rule policy created immense divisions within the Nigerian society among the major tribes known as Hausa, Yoruba and Igbo. India got, and coming to the case of independence, India got independence in the year 1947 while, while Nigeria got independence in the year 1960, relatively peaceful than the Indian independence. Coming to the Indo-Nigerian relationship, in the post-war world, India established the diplomatic presence or a diplomatic, uh, early diplomatic attempts to establish the relation with the Nigeria was there since the year 1958 through making a diplomatic presence in the city of Lagos. And in 2007, the Abuja declaration was signed. This paid or this established the platform for the modern partnership between India and Nigeria. Coming to the Indian diaspora in Nigeria, approximately 50,000 Indians are currently living in Nigeria and they are making strong contributions to different sectors such as manufacturing, healthcare, pharmaceuticals and finance. For example, the Indian pharmaceuticals, MSOR pharmaceuticals provides, MSOR pharmaceuticals, it is an Indian pharmaceutical that provides healthcare facilities to the Nigerian people at the relatively low cost. Coming to the high level visits, for example, the president of Nigeria, Mohammed Buhari attended the India Africa Forum Summit in 2015 and this paved an opportunity for discussing the cooperation between two nations in the field of technology, agriculture as well as defense. Coming to the defense partnership between the two nations, the, uh, the government of India is providing training for Nigerian military personnel. And India even helped Nigeria to establish its, its own national defense academy. And the both countries are strongly participating in the field of anti-piracy operations, especially in the Gulf of Guinea, which is very critical for the West African trade. Because the recent exercise between the two nations exhibited several defense assets such as INS Tarkash as well as several anti patrol ships of Nigeria. And coming to the IT capacity building, we know that India is very strong in IT sector. Therefore, we provided training for Nigerian professionals in IT and cyber security through Indian technical and economic cooperation program. And nearly thousands of Nigerian youth people took training under this program. Now, we are going to see certain challenges associated with the India-Nigeria relationship. The first major challenge is political instability due to the due to the complex regulations from the government sides. At the same time, the frequent changes of leadership in the both nations. But relatively, India is... And the second major challenge is competition. That is, Nigeria's partnership with other nations, especially nations like China. Because we know that Nigeria is very rich in minerals. And they relatively exploited only less amount of their minerals. Therefore... Uh, the nations like China who is uh, currently monopolizing the energy sector becomes a, becomes a competitor in India's relation with uh, Nigeria. And uh, the another uh, major challenge is the energy dependency. That means India is, over, India is overlaying on oil trade which makes it vulnerable for price fluctuations due to the internal as well as other issues have happening in Africa. And the next major challenge is security issues. This is due to the rising piracy as well as insurgency uh, 
happening within the country of Nigeria as well as in the piracy issues in West African coast. And this will affect the, the confidence of Indian people to make investments in the Nigerian soil. And the last one is the trade barriers. As usual, every nation has this problem, tariff as well as non-tariff barriers that limits market access to investors in both nations. This is happening in the case of India-Nigeria relation too. Moving on, now we are going to see certain recent initiatives came out as a result of India-Nigeria relationship. The first major initiative is a digital health project known as e Arogya Bharati. This enhanced healthcare access via telemedicine. This will be very useful for the remote people living in, in the rural area of Nigeria which is facing difficulty of transportation. And the second major initiative is e Vidya Bharati network which provides access to quality online education and health services for the Nigerian youth and students and especially through the Indian institutions. And third is the renewable energy investments that is India supporting solar energy programs in Nigeria at the same time Indian Solar Institute. The National Institute of, Institute of Solar Energy is currently providing training for the Nigerian experts as well as professionals uh, regarding the opportunities and scope of solar energy in the Nigerian land. Then we have the joint trade committee and presently the joint trade committee was revitalized to increase the trade bo trade volume between two nations and also to address trade barriers between the two nations. And finally, we have the next initiative is the expansion of Indian business in Nigeria. We already told nearly 50,000 people are living in Nigeria, right? Therefore, currently the Indian companies in Nigeria have increased their investments, particularly in the field of telecommunication, pharma institutes, as well as manufacturing. The best example is the Bharati Airtel, which is currently expanding in Nigeria, which ensures communication in every part of the African nation. So, in this topic, we discussed India-Nigeria relationship, the opportunities, challenges in it, and what are the recent initiatives. So, with this idea, try to answer this main practice question. The question is, examine the role of energy cooperation in strengthening India-Nigeria bilateral ties and identify the challenges and opportunities for both countries in this sector. So, simply this question is asking about the role of energy cooperation between India-Nigeria relationship. So, we can say that India, we need, we are searching for minerals for our economic growth. But at the same time, Nigeria needs assistance, especially in the field of medical, defense, education, etc. So, try to answer this question and post it in the comment section. We will review and reply for your answer. Now, we will move to the next topic. Look at this newspaper article taken from the Hindu, the discovery of insulin and the flame of hope. This article, we know that November 14 is observed as World Diabetes Day and this article is an honor to Sir Frederick Bunting who discovered insulin in the year 1921 along with, along with Charles Best. So, we know that the insulin discovery was a turning point in the management of diabetes as well as it is a turning point in the modern health. And presently, diabetes is considered as, a, as, a, as an epidemic by the World Health Organization. And we are expecting around 400 million plus diabetes cases by 2045. This discovery paved way, way for further developments in the field of diabetology. For example, recently we discovered digital insulin which automatically regulates the blood sugar level like the pancreas. So, let us discuss more about diabetes in this background and what are the challenges associated with this. First, we will start with the basic question. We know what is diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic metabolic disorder with a high glucose level in the blood. And it is caused due to two major reasons, insufficient insulin production in the body or ineffective utilization of produced insulin by the body. What is insulin? Insulin, it is a hormone produced by pancreas that helps cells use the glucose for energy. So, we will see this detailing. So, this is how it functions, blood sugar generation. So, the we know that blood sugar means glucose level in the blood. How the body generates this glucose? It is generated from digester carbon hydrates. So, this carbon hydrates digest and it, uh, it becomes glucose and enters into bloodstream and the insulin helps cells to absorb the glucose for energy storage and the excess glucose will be stored in liver as, as glycogen and how this hormone regulates the blood sugar. For example, insulin lowers the blood sugar but at the same time another hormone produced by the pancreas known as, glu known as glucagon rises the blood sugar. So, this is how it functions. That means the glucose, that is the sugar, will be produced from the digester carbohydrates in the food and uh, the glucose will enter the bloodstream and the insulin will absorb glucose for energy storage and the excess 
glucose will be stored in liver as glycogen and then we saw how the hormonal how this hormone regulates the blood sugar for example the insulin hormone produced by the pancreas lowers the blood sugar while the glucagon another is, uh, hormone produced by the pancreas rises the blood sugar so this is how it functions and how this insulin functions we are going to see that detailly it regulates the blood sugar how it allows the glucose to enter into cell for energy storage at the same time it also it also plays additional functions such as it aids in fat storage as well as protein synthesis now we are going to see the types of diabetes diabetes type 1 diabetes type 2 type 1 diabetes it happens when the body when the body does not produce sufficient insulin diabetes 2 it happens when the body cannot effectively utilize the insulin produced by the body now we are going to see the prevalence statistics of diabetes coming to the indian scenario according to the indian medical association there is around 77 million diabetes cases in india and the national family health survey 5 suggested that there is an increase of rate of obesity by 24 percentage in women and 23 percentage in men so this also is an another threat that will bring a burden of diabetes in the upcoming times and coming to the global level the who report says that nearly by 2045 there will be 400 plus million cases across the world so this can bring immense economic burden due to the less productivity as well as increasing cost of health care and this research organizations are advocating for promotion of artificial intelligence in healthcare for creating better awareness and treatment now we are going to see the challenges associated with the diabetes the first major challenge is rising obesity it is due to the present food habit lifestyle changes such as the emergence of sedentary lifestyle as well as the increasing rate of mobile phone or other digital equipments and the next major challenge is and the next major challenge is underfunded underfunded healthcare system this will huddle uh, the the diabetes treatment due to the increasing rate of cost has, as well as lack of healthcare infrastructure the next major challenge is the costly advanced technologies and this questions the affordability of people to manage diabetes for example the glucose meters they are costly and this will not be affordable for many people living in the middle as well as lower strata of the society therefore it will increase the burden of diabetes in the upcoming future if we cannot do anything to reduce the cost or we cannot promote subsidies to to purchase these type of costly advanced technologies for diabetes management and the last one is the preventability of diabetes type 2 through lifestyle changes yes the diabetes type 2 can be prevented or we can postpone that to the later ages of our of our life but unfortunately due to the rising you know the rising use of the digital equipment as well as the changes in the lifestyle changes in the food style and due to various other reasons such as urbanization and all the, this also becomes a matter of question the, the preventability of the type 2 diabetes also becomes a matter of question now we are going to see another concept related to diabetes management that is the glycemic index so what is glycemic index it is an indicator which ranks the carbohydrates based on in the food products based on their impact on the should in, on the blood sugar level and this can be broadly classified into three categories the first one is the low glycemic index food here the the score will be 55 or below this includes food that that uh, that raises the blood sugar level gradually for example oats and legumes in the case of medium glycemic foods the score will be between 56 to 69 here this uh, this type of food can bring moderate changes in the blood sugar level such as whole wheat and the next is the high glycemic food here the point will be above 70 therefore this type of food can bring a rapid spike in the blood sugar level for example white bread and other sweet items as well as as well as processed food and what is the importance of the glycemic index so this helps in maintaining the stability of the blood sugar level and also reduces the complications associated with the rapid spike of blood sugar level due to the consumption of food and next one is the glycemic index is also useful in weight management because we know that obesity is one of the major reasons for diabetes therefore the people the consumers can make healthy choice when they purchase food products so these are this is the importance of glycemic index so in this topic we discussed what is diabetes and how diabetes is becoming a challenge for the global society and what are the steps can be taken 
and what are the challenges associated with the uh, with overcoming the diabetes and try to answer this mains practice question based on our discussion the question is the discovery of insulin revolutionized diabetes treatment yet challenges in accessibility and affordability remain for many patients well divided discuss the significance of insulin's discovery and analyze the current issues related to its accessibility especially in the low and middle income countries try to answer this mains practice question and post it in the comment section we will review and reply for your answer the monthly current affair marathon for of shankara yes academy for the month october 2024 is available on our youtube channel watch it and prepare strongly for the prelims if you like the video hit the like button give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive on time update thank you have a nice day